Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at this uh, muscle fiber model and how it functions. So basically here, this represents the sarcolemma or the plasma membrane of a muscle fiber. Within the sarcolemma, we will have indentations that goes internally to provide this area where you can transfer the action potential or the electrical signal that makes this muscle to contract. So the sarcolemma will depend into an indentation that we call the T-tubule, which will be this one represented in yellow color. Now on the sides of the T-tubules, we have the <coughs> internally in the plasma membrane, we have this connection of terminal cisternae, which are part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum will be the equivalent of the endoplasmic reticulum in cells. And in the case of the muscle cells, the sarcoplasmic reticulum helps to make uh, this storage of calcium so that you can have contraction of muscle cells. Calcium is necessary for contraction of muscle cells along with ATP and also an electrical signal that we know as action potential. So again, on the sides of the T-tubule, which is the indentation of the sarcolemma or the plasma membrane that goes deep into the muscle fiber, on this side of this T-tubule, we have two, two terminal cisternae, which are dilations of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, two terminal cisternae, which are these, and a single T-tubule will make a triad. So when the action potential reaches this T-tubule and deepens into the muscle fiber, it stimulates receptors within the sarcoplasmic reticulum that open calcium channels so that the calcium escapes from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and then it do its function so you can have muscular contraction. Now, if we take away the sarcolemma, we will be able to see the different components of a muscle fiber. So in the muscle fiber, we have this structure, that it is a structural and functional unit that is called the sarcomere. A sarcomere runs from an edge of a C line to another C line. And here we have the fibers running from C line to C line. So these will be the different fibers or components of the muscle fiber. So we have actin and myosin. Myosin will be this one in blue color and actin, this one in red color. Actin and myosin are proteins and they slide over each other. So myosin, it is thicker than actin. And myosin has these protrusions that are heads and it has a rod shaped like a uh, portion that it doesn't have the head. So when the heads of actin interact with the actin binding site, so you can have this physical connection between actin and myosin that helps to pull actin over myosin. Now, actin, it is not always attached to myosin, only when contraction is going to happen. And in order to prevent actin from binding to myosin when contraction is not happening, we have this protein that is called troponin. So troponin, uh, then it is preventing the binding of actin to myosin. And when calcium comes in, this troponin moves away from the actin and then myosin can bind into actin. Now the fibers of myosin, they have these heads, and then they have this shaft, and then they have a hinge that makes this head movable. Towards the center of the muscle fiber, 
which is this. And then <clears throat> when this has upon the action of calcium and ATP, they have uh, an enzyme within the head that is called the ATP. When ATP comes in and binds to the head of myosin, then myosin head can swivel towards the center of the sarcomere, which is this, and then it can bind actin and you can have shortening of this muscle fiber, which is hard in this model, but it will happen like this. Now, in order for, for us to relax these muscle fibers when they are contracting, we need to have this ATP so that the head of myosin can relax and can let go this actin filament. And then the troponin can go back into the place where myosin was binding so you can have relaxation of the muscle fibers. So calcium is necessary then for contraction of the muscle while ATP is necessary for relaxation. If someone uh, is running or doing exercise and it runs up, run out of glucose and glucose is necessary to make ATP, there is no ATP in the muscle fiber anymore and the myosin head will be stuck into actin filament and there is no relaxation. That's how you feel a cramp. And uh, something that happens after we die, uh, like four hours after we die, is rigor mortis, in which the filaments of actin get temporarily stuck to the myosin head. And this happens because the sarcoplasmic reticulum leaks its calcium storage into the cytoplasm of the muscle fiber and then troponin moves away and the heads of uh, myosin binds to actin. But as time passes by, and since we don't have ATP, this ATP runs out and then the person will have this heads of myosin stuck to actin and then you will have rigor mortis. Now, these bridges of actin and myosin get broken after four hours because we start having these enzymes that dissolve these uh, bridges of actin and myosin because we will have cytolysis or the leakage of these enzymes within the muscle fibers. But otherwise, uh, rigor mortis happens because the lack of ATP since people when it's dead, they cannot generate energy, they cannot generate ATP you have rigor mortis for at least four hours. And uh, this is all uh, for this video.